Heather, once upon a time, I decided that I wanted to get a tattoo. Now I never went through with it. I don't actually have a tattoo, but I really wanted one. I was, I'm big into astronomy and I found this spine tattoo of the phases of the moon and it just that sounds awesome and painful. It sounded really painful. I mean, ta <laughs> that's what tattoos are. But I never did it. But in my quest to look for the perfect tattoo, I also found these tattoos of like horrible, horrible tattoo fails of like massive misspellings or somebody that was trying to get, you know, a, a picture of a person on their arm or whatever. And it just turned out horrible. There's no going back there either. There isn't. There isn't. But the ones that I love the most were the tattoos that were absolute failures that then a better tattoo artist came and covered it up and turned it into something beautiful and remarkable. They weren't trying to cover up their mistake mm -hmm. as in they weren't trying to delete it. They didn't go and get their tattoo removed. They covered it up with something better with a success helped along by somebody who knew better mm -hmm. to turn the failure into something beautiful. So today on the podcast, we're going to talk about how we can turn our failures because we all have them. And instead of trying to ignore them and getting them to go away, how do we turn those failures into something absolutely beautiful and way better than what we thought we wanted in the first place? It's one of my most favorite things. I love it. Let's go. I wrote a blog a while back about this and it is one of my most favorite subjects to talk about. It's fascinating. Because it really is. I am a perfectionist. <laughs> We've had this conversation. Me too. <laughs> and I tend to take failure really hard. hard. Mm -hmm. Really hard. I'm really hard on myself. I'm like beat myself up. I'm like, oh, you suck. And I have been working on not doing that for quite some time. And in the process, I realized that I never really believed that failure was permanent, Yeah, which is funny because I'd get all mad about it. <laughs> but I also firmly believe that everything happens as it should, when it should, for a reason. To learn and grow. And sometimes it is hard as hell. Yes. To wait. To yes. find out the why, to find out the, Amen. what was the reason that I had to go through this insane journey. But every time I come out of one and I figure that out, I'm like, oh, I'm always grateful that I went through it. Yeah. Oh, grateful. absolutely. Even if it was awful and horrendous, I'm always grateful because I come out on the other side going, I know what I needed to learn. Yep. I know what made me stronger. And now I know moving forward how to not repeat that and how to grow from it. I'm a better person because of it. And we talked about it early on in our podcast about the taking your, your failure as a block and building stairs. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think about that one all the time too. Yes. Because, you know, you think about, all right, well, I tried this diet or I tried this workout and it didn't work for me. I didn't lose any weight, this and that. Yeah. Did you fail or did you learn what doesn't work for you? Exactly. You can cross one more thing off because if you hadn't noticed, there are like five bajillion ways to diet <laughs> and exercise. Only five bajillion? Only five bajillion. I thought there were a few more than So that. you've now crossed off one <laughs> of Yay! those five bajillion and you can narrow it down just a little more. Right. But truly, you know, if I, I tried, I've told this story a thousand times on this podcast about my grand epiphany about wheat and my body yes. not liking it. Yes. I would not have figured that out had I not tried to totally go all in on whole grain and green smoothies for breakfast mm -hmm. and then proceeded and to then had that have an extra <laughs> fluffy belly. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you calling a fluffy? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. But I mean, how many times do we listen to, I mean, the best motivational speakers we yes. listen to have a story of absolute failure that got them to where they want to go. We, we mm -hmm. have our favorite Ted talks. We have our favorite motivational speaker. We have our favorite podcaster. We have our favorite you athletes. Know, athletes. We have our favorite people. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, if they get asked 
you know, if you could go back and take that away from your past, would you do it? And they usually say no. And they say no. Mm -hmm. They say no because they know that that's what made them the person that they are today. If they had removed that failure from their past, they would not have learned and not have grown. Yeah. And since we talked about successes last week, that's kind of why we're talking about failure <laughs> this week is because, you know what, not everything is, you know, can be seen through rose colored glasses. And, yeah. and we all know that and nobody's, you know, this isn't news to anybody. <laughs> Congratulations, you've figured it out. Um, <laughs> but it's one of those that take your failures, you know, okay, so like we talked about last week, a lot of people are seeing success and being able to declutter on their own because they're actually home right now <laughs> and they have the time to get their homes decluttered. Mm -hmm. But there have been a couple of people that have said, you know what, I'm throwing in the towel on this because it's just not working. I don't get it. I don't see it. The, the, you know, I declutter a room, I organize it, I go make dinner, I come back and it is exploded everywhere. But there again, like with the diets, there's more than one way to mm -hmm. organize a space. So all you just did is find out one way not to do That's it. That's not your system. That's not your system. Yeah. It didn't work. So let's find that. Let's embrace that and say, oh, okay. And then embrace it for the failure that it was and try something right. new and try something different. But that's why coaches and mentors and things like that exist um, is so that well, that's where I started Vicky. figuring that out for myself was you. working with a coach. Yes. I finally figured mm -hmm. out and it even goes, you know, we sometimes, um, we don't use our childhood as a crutch necessarily, but we kind of justify away. Mm, well, you know, I was raised in this kind of a house or my parents had, you know, taught me this kind of way of thinking about whatever. And we use that as our fallback as to why we can't change. Exactly. And I had a bit of a, a, an epiphany about that because the way I was raised led to me being so hard on myself about not being the very best at everything. And I realized at first I was like, God, I wish I hadn't had that. that would, my life would be so much better if I hadn't gone through that. And if I'd had better this and parents like the Brady Bunch or whatever. <laughs> You know, and the then perfect TV parents. Uh huh. But then I look at other people who were not raised with parents the similar to mine, and I'm like, I would not be who I am mm -mm. if I hadn't had that experience. And so, as much as it, there were sucky parts of it that I really didn't love going through, I'm grateful now. Yeah. Because it made me who I am. Yep. Absolutely. And I think. We can all recognize that if we've truly overcome our failures mm -hmm. and if we truly treat ourselves as our own heroes instead of, you know, playing the victim and, and curling up in a ball and crying, <laughs> um, then we can see the successes that come from it. And we can see how just how awesome our lives can truly be. And I think that's why we weren't afraid to talk about failures again, because we did yeah. talk about it in that uh, previous episode. But it's one of those that I think when we talk about it in different contexts, it can well, mean think, different things. Hello, 2020 is a right. different context. <laughs> <laughs> and yep. you may be feeling like you're failing just at life right now. Yeah. You know, just trying to just, I mean, I have seen so many people that are just really frustrated with their marriage, with their kids, uh -huh. with their everything. Cause they're like, I'm stuck and I'm surrounded and I've never had this much time with these people, <laughs> which I think is hysterical because that is why you marry people so that you have them around. I'm just going to say, <laughs> maybe be a little more careful <laughs> about who you choose to marry because you might have to be quarantined with them. Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. be extra careful mm -hmm. that you choose the right person. Mm -hmm. And if you can't go back <laughs> on that decision, maybe we need to find something together that we like about one another. <laughs> No, I actually had another, I had two people in one day say to me that they love their husband, but they needed but... to go on vacation without, and they both did. No yeah. way. One, she they straight went to the coast by herself. She has five kids. Oh my word. And she's like, yeah, nope, not taking any kids, not taking my husband, taking me and going. She's like, because if I don't, 
people will die. I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other one, like the same day, she's like, yeah, I'm going on a girl's trip because I just, I, I just. That's so off. <laughs> she was like, she was like, my husband was like, do you want to go to date? And she's like, well, we had breakfast nope. and lunch together. Is that good? Why do we need to go on a date? Why do we need another one? So, you know, you can look at it like, oh man, we're failing at everything and this, everything is hard and it's a struggle. Or you can look at it as this is an opportunity yep. to see really laser focus on what you want to work on yeah. and what you want to improve and maybe things that you didn't realize you know, the little things that were niggling under the surface that mm -hmm. you just kind of mm -hmm. brush the past and you don't pay attention to. Well, now, 24-7, they've burst through. Oh, yes. And oh, yes. It's time to address it. We are it is... here front and center full on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because the story that you just said, I'm sure like half of our listeners are going, oh, yes, that's exactly what I want to do. And then the other half are going, oh, how dare they? Yes. You know, and so you can see things. I mean, everything is seen through your own perspective. Um, and, and take it and run with it. You know, some people see that as a failure and some people see it as a success. So whatever you see as a failure, um, that's yours to own and nobody yes. else can fix it because somebody else might not see that as a failure. And so they don't know and understand why you view it as such. And right. so, um, I think, I mean, that's, that's really yours to own. It's like that tattoo it's yours. You can't, you know, you can't rub it off. You can't, you know, lick it and transfer it onto somebody else. I mean, that too, ta ta tattoo is yours. You get to keep it forever and always. So are you going to cover it up for the rest of your life and wear long sleeve shirts and never go to the beach and never do that kind of stuff because you're ashamed and embarrassed of this tattoo? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to go look for somebody who can teach you how to do something better, mm -hmm. who has a better idea, who has a better way of doing things and turning and transforming that tattoo mm -hmm. into something beautiful. Let's transform that mistake into something beautiful, but that can only happen if you own it, if you yep. own that failure. And then if you start treating yourself instead of as a failure, if you start treating yourself as your own hero, absolutely, you are your own hero. You are the one who can say, whoa, <laughs> well, that's screwed up. You know mm -hmm. what? But I'm not going to blame the tattoo artist. I am going to own it. I am going to sit with it. And I am either going to wear this unashamed and tell the story, <laughs> or I am going to go find somebody who can turn this, help me turn this failure into a masterpiece. I love it. So homework for this week. I think you need to look at 2020. Yep. And what is it the thing that you are thinking was the worst thing that has happened? Maybe it was you got laid off. Maybe it was your kids had to come home and stay forever. Maybe it was you had to spend 24 seven with your spouse and you realize that they really get on your nerves. Whatever it is that you're looking back and you're feeling. Whatever and it is, yep. You might be feeling a little guilt about that. I mean, when you're like, I love my husband, but he drives me crazy. That I'm sure doesn't feel good to say. No, I am not saying that about my husband. I actually do. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I mean, mom guilt all the way around. Yeah, you mom know, guilt, wife guilt. We're kind of spread thin I, right now it is. in different ways that we haven't mm -hmm. experienced up until this point. And so what are we feeling and how are we feeling like a failure? What is, so for homework, what is the biggest failure? The one that you want to cover up, the one that you wish never happened sit in it for a minute, recognize that it's there because we can't fix it if we won't recognize it. Mm -hmm. um, but then write down a couple of things that will make you your own hero. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? How can you fix it or yeah. build on it? Yeah. Use it as a stepping stone. Exactly. Climb up and over that hurdle. Pull it out of your backpack. Start building a stepping a staircase instead of lugging it around as just dead weight in your backpack. So no more ugly tattoos. We're going to take this ugly, horrible, awful tattoo, and we're going to turn it into a masterpiece. That's the homework for this week. And as always, like it, subscribe, and share it with somebody who needs this information, who needs the details. And come on, after the summer of 2020? I was going to say, it's everyone you know. <laughs> everyone you know. Just like send it, blast it. Share it out there. <laughs> and of course, we are here to love you and support you and yes. cheer with you. So whatever you do, um, let us know. Post it to our HomeBod podcast Facebook page. Shoot us an email. Whatever you do, let us know how we can cheer you on and help you turn those failures 
into successes, into something beautiful. We'll see you next time.